there's a plethora of unit types and variations to choose from in Age of Empires 2. Knowing when to use the right type can sometimes seem like an impossible task. In this video, I'll overview the various advantages and disadvantages of each unit type in Deathmatch to allow you to understand the reasoning that goes into choosing your own army. This will give you a solid foundation for choosing what buildings to make in your Deathmatch build order. Now, before we start, always know that unit choice is dependent, if not determined, by your civilization and your playstyle. Different civs are good at different things. In this video, I can't possibly go over each and every unit and building combo that you'd make with every one of the 31 civilizations. I can, however, tell you what certain unit types are good at, and by extension, tell you what buildings you should make with certain types of civilizations. Now, to get started, remember that the goal of your starting build is to create a powerful military force as fast as possible. This means that for the purposes of this video, when I say a particular opening is fast, I do not mean that the units have high movement speed. I mean that a certain opening creates more power in a given amount of time. While movement speed often makes a unit more powerful, it doesn't necessarily mean that a certain opening is a faster opening. Think of it as a formula in which you divide power by time and the openings with the higher resulting numbers are better and faster. Now that we have that out of the way, let's go over the unit classes. First, cavalry units are made at the stable. Paladins, and by extension their weaker younger brothers, the Cavaliers, have fast movement speed and high stats, making a stable opening a fast one. Civs with Paladins are fast enough to do a rush strategy, in which they send units early to the enemy base. Because of the Paladins' high stats, they're very population efficient, making them good throughout the entire game. Another fast cavalry unit is the Heavy Camel. While it has a higher movement speed and creation speed than the Paladin, it has lower stats, meaning it's not quite as powerful in the early game, and therefore a camel opening isn't quite as fast. This opening does work, however, versus Paladin sieves because camels counter Paladins, and as such, they're the counter to the fastest generic opening in the game. Also, on a side note, Hussars and Light Cavalry are very weak, yet very inexpensive and very fast units that can be great for raiding later in the game. However, they're really not useful at all in the early game, except for maybe sniping Siege if you ran out of gold for Paladins or Camels. The rarest stable unit is the Elite Battle Elephant, being available to only four civilizations. Concerning movement, it is the slowest stable unit. However, because of its incredibly high stats and its creation time that is the same as a Paladin, it is by far the most powerful opening from the stable. You can't really rush and snipe villagers in the same way that Paladin or Camel Civs can, but it doesn't take very long to get very many of them out, meaning Elephant Civs have among the strongest pushes in the game. The next class of units are Siege Units, made at the Siege Workshop. Now, while all of these units fulfill different roles, they're all relatively slow at the very start of a game. Sure, for the most part they are very powerful, but both Siege Workshops and the units themselves are created very slowly. They are great support units, however, and can complement infantry and cavalry very well, adding in some important power once the game gets rolling. This means that once you have units on the field, the creation of Siege Workshops can actually add so much power to your army that using them can be considered a fast choice. Let's look at some examples. While Siege Onagers can hurt your own army, they deal a lot of damage to enemies also, meaning just a few good Onager shots can wipe out entire armies, vastly weakening them, and drastically increasing your relative power on the field. Ergo, under my definition, they are fast. You can also get Siege Rams onto the field far earlier than Trebuchets, and they destroy buildings in seconds, meaning your opponents will struggle to create more units, increasing your relative power. Ergo, again, they are also a fast addition to your army. Additionally, when used properly, they virtually neutralize archers, but we'll get back to that in a later video. While Heavy Scorpions don't have quite the potential to wipe out large swaths of enemy armies like Onagers do, they completely lack the potential to do the same thing to your own, making them very good against infantry. Their high attack and ability to damage multiple units also makes them good against high Pierce Armor infantry, such as the popular Huskarls and Eagle Warriors, and once you have several of them out, they absolutely murder anything that gets close. Again, destroying large groups of army will drastically increase your relative power on the field. Ergo, they can be fast. I think you get the picture. Siege can be a fast addition to your army. However, please note that this does not go for Bombard Cannons. They are very expensive and they're very fragile, and because they only really serve to take out Onagers and Scorpions, they're not that great of a unit to use. 
They can take out buildings and offer long-range support, but onagers and rams simply do this far better, and as such, in deathmatch, pro players try to stay away from them as much as possible. Moving on, infantry units serve as medium power meat shields and counter units. While the champion has good stats for an infantry unit, it simply can't compete with paladins, making a champion opening comparatively slow. They do, however, counter Huskarls and Eagle Warriors, meaning if you don't have Paladins, you should make them at the start versus the Goths and the Mezzo Civs. The Halberdiers' only purpose is to serve as a hard counter to cavalry units. They really don't do anything else. Because they have lower stats than Camels, you should make Camels instead whenever possible. The same is even true with Paladins. However, for Civs that don't have Paladins or Camels, making Halberdiers versus a Paladin Rush is normally your only choice. Halbs are not the best unit, but if they keep you alive, they keep your relative power from diminishing beyond a point of no return, making them a necessary, if unfortunate, choice at times. Now, archer units are probably the most difficult to understand because of the effects of their range. However, fortunately, in general, they're the weakest class, so you can ignore them if your civilization has a good early game cavalry, siege, or infantry combo. However, for those civs that don't, archers can still be useful and occasionally a powerful addition. The most powerful generic archer unit is the Heavy Cavalry Archer. While it does not counter cavalry or siege, it has high stats and mobility, and the fact that it's ranged means you can deal a lot of damage with them at one time. Civs with good Heavy Cavalry Archers generally use archery ranges as their second building type after barracks or staples. They're a great support unit, but you have to be careful around archers and get used to having to babysit them. Arbalests are basically weaker and slower, yet less expensive versions of the Heavy Cav Archers. They have lower stats and perform far worse versus Cavalry, Siege, and even Infantry. However, for civs that don't have Heavy Cavalry Archers, they can often be a good addition to protect other units. Skirmishers only exist to counter Archers, and are far less useful than Onagers or Rams at doing so, so only make them in 1 vs 1 Trash Wars where you need to save your gold. Well, I've gone through the strengths and weaknesses of each unit type and given you a somewhat vague understanding of when to make them. The next episode in this series will serve as a follow-up video to this one. I'll teach you how to choose what buildings you make based upon what your civilization is good at, and I'll also show you the order in which you would do this, so make sure to subscribe and get notified when the next episode is published. Until then.